another thing we can do with HR diagrams is to look at this mass luminosity relation. This is actually, believe it or not, this is really, really hard to figure out. Uh, so this number is not exactly, um, well, it's changing. How's this? Uh, but in the IB, we've decided let's use the number 3.5 as the exponent. So basically, it says that the luminosity of a star is proportional to its own mass to the power of about 3.5. We say proportional. Remember what it means to be proportional. It means um, it's equal to some constant, you know, times m to the 3.5. We just don't know what that constant is, right? So, or that's the whole point. We could find it, but basically when you're looking at these different things, it has to do with that its luminosity has to do with its mass, which means the more massive it is, the more luminous it is and vice versa. That's why, do you notice these ones right here then? Uh, can you see this, this sort of pinkish writing right here? You see this is 60 times the mass of the sun, whereas ones down here are like 0.1 times the mass of the sun. So you notice as you go sort of up this way to sort of a top of that um, HR diagram as you go larger values do you notice it's also larger luminosity values so they are related so that's kind of neat huh uh, now I love this when I die I'm taking you with me <laughs> is the uh, was it the mean the overly attached girlfriend I think it is so <laughs> that just made me laugh so here's what's gonna happen to our own son I mean this is a really detailed version you don't have to know it's so detailed here's what you need to know for an exam if they say like draw the evolution of our son you can say all right well let's draw the remember what this is this is the main sequence right so it's important to know all right here's the main sequence and our son is roughly here this is our son remember this is about 30,000 degrees Kelvin this is about 3,000 degrees Kelvin our sun is somewhere in the middle um, so we have a certain luminosity here right and what's going to happen is again as our sun runs out of hydrogen this is what happens here do you notice right now it's going hydrogen to helium right as it runs out of hydrogen in its core for cool reasons it's going to do these weird curves I've taken whole astrophysics courses about that you don't need to know about it for the exam but it is really interesting um, we have these weird kind of things like these hooks in these different places, but basically what's going to happen is the core is going to contract, um, which means the outer part's going to expand. So that's why it's actually going to get um, less dense. It's not going to gain mass, obviously. So what's going to happen then is this. It's going to get less dense. It's going to sort of go up into this idea of this sort of red giants stage. That's what's going to happen here. Okay, It's going to go to the red giant stage. Our sun is going to go up there. And in that, we call it the helium flash. So there, it might actually get hot enough in there to actually allow it to convert helium. For example, it can go helium to carbon, for example, or oxygen or nitrogen. And that'll happen until what happens? It might run out of helium. And if it runs out of helium, then its core is going to collapse again. It's going to go sort of up like this. And then maybe then it can make the next element and so on. Now, what really happens is kind of cool. Up here, it makes this sort of uh, idea right here. These are here called AGB. That's really interesting. They're called asymptotic, asymptotic giant branch. You don't exactly have to know this, but it's really interesting. What happens is as it's doing these different stages, as it's going to higher and higher elements, you know, it's going to be sort of puffing out and puffing out and puffing out. So as it does that, it actually makes what's called a planetary nebula. Now, the problem is nebula implies a cloud. Well, that's actually what the word sort of meaning is. A nebula is a cloud. At the time when they, before they knew what stars were made of and what they really were and what was going on in space, they used to think anything that looked like a cloud, we'll just call it a cloud. We'll call it a nebula. But sometimes it really is a gas cloud. A planetary nebula has nothing to do with the planet and it's not really a cloud. But what it is is that uh, stars like our own, for example, as they're sort of puffing out these different layers, they make these beautiful sort of shapes in the sky. And what's going to happen, of course, eventually they're not going to be able to fuse the next thing. So it's going to eventually just slowly, slowly die out until it becomes a white dwarf. Okay, so that's going to be what's going to happen to our sun. That's going to be the eventual uh, fate of our sun. But I thought it'd be interesting to show you some uh, different details here. So let's go over some details. First of all, what is a planetary nebula? Let's just go back. When it's doing this AGB stage, the stage where it's going sort of up and down and doing different things, uh, it makes these really pretty diagrams. Look at this. This is called the cat's eye nebula. 
That one was actually taken with x-rays, but still, if you look at it, it's got these really cool structures. So that was taken uh, by a really cool telescope. You got the Helix Nebula and the Ring Nebula. Don't they look beautiful? These are real things that you find out in space. The Dumbbell Nebula, um, I put this picture in because I took this one. This one here is my picture, so I took it. I took it at a place called uh, Knot. That's the Nordic Optical Telescope. It's in uh, the Canary Islands, so one of my courses I took, we were learning how to take pictures with huge telescope so it's like it's on top of a mountain or almost at the top at least there's this you know imagine this big dome sort of thing and there's a whole bunch of different places where they have these different uh, telescopes and they have sort of you know you peer out into the stars there's lots of other telescopes of course but this is I thought that was really cool so you can see these different structures here happening that's a planetary nebula and going more detail to the white dwarfs for example is a really really bright star called Sirius A but right next to it, because it's a binary system, binary means two stars together, there's Sirius B. It's its little partner, and they actually orbit each other. And it's a white dwarf. So I guess it's a bit sexist, but although it could be for a guy or a girl, I guess. Baby, you're like a white dwarf star. You're extremely hot, but not very bright. Ha. Huh. Um, so let's do an IB exam question. Now, I gave a really detailed diagram here, and the IB would be a lot less detailed, but the idea is the same. Use the diagram below to find the mass in solar masses. Remember, that's going to mean like some number times the mass of the sun of this star, Beta Centauri. So let's maybe look it up. First of all, you have to know that Beta is this symbol here. So we have to look for something that says Beta Centauri. And let's look it up here. Can you see on this one right here? Can you see this one here? Beta Centauri is actually this one right here. This is the star we wanted right here. This is the star. So maybe I'll make a different color so we can see it. Is it purple maybe? No, that matches this, darn it. I'm uh, really making a lot of colors that match. Here we go. Beta Centauri is this one. So can you see we would actually spot it because of where it fits on this diagram here. But do you notice from this, all we can get, we can estimate its temperature. That's all we can do from this diagram. Or we can estimate its luminosity. And remember, this is in solar units. So do you notice, and we can tell then from this graph that luminosity of this star, maybe I'll just call it C for, you know, Centauri here. Um, it's equal to 10 to the 5, but it's not just 10 to the 5 watts. It's 10 to the 5 solar units. Really important. That's 10 to the 5 times the luminosity of the sun. That's what's happening here. That's about all I can tell. I guess I could estimate the temperature. Now, I'm kind of cheating because in this diagram has a lot of detail. If you wanted to estimate the mass, can you see? You can actually sort of cheat and use these sort of pinkish, purplish numbers here. Say, well, somewhere between 30 and 10 solar masses. But let's pretend we didn't see these numbers, okay? On an actual exam question, they wouldn't show you that. I just showed you a nice detailed one, but it would be something like this. We can tell this. So all we have is this. How do we get the mass? Well, we can take a look at this nice equation. Remember this relation here? Luminosity is uh, proportional to m to the power of 3.5. So if you really want to go into detail, then let's actually do it. We can say the luminosity of star C is equal to some constant times m to the 3.5. Right? That's really all we can say. M, C, I guess. We don't know what that constant is, though, because we want to use equal. We can say equal. We just have to put a constant. Or you can just put proportional to. Some people are okay with that. Problem is we're kind of stuck. So what do we do when we're really stuck on questions? We do ratios, especially in astrophysics option. That's the key. So watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to make myself an equation. I'm going to say LC uh, is roughly equal to, yes, that's true, it's this, but I'm going to divide it by L of the sun. Let's just do another thing that we know. All we know is the sun here, so maybe I can do that. Do you see I'm writing an equation for the sun? The luminosity of the sun is that same constant. Do you see how those constants cancel out? That's why it was okay to do that. Now, what do we know about LC? We know it's actually equal to, let's maybe do it different colors here. We know the luminosity of C is equal to 10 to the 5 L sun. So I'll put that down. So 10 to the 5 L sun over L sun equals mc, which we don't know, over m of the sun. And since they're both to the power of 3.5, did you know I can do this? I can combine them since they're both like this. I can do that. Now, luminosity of the suns, those cancel out. Good, because I didn't know that value. I'm not giving it. So good news, now I know this. So now I know that 10 to the power of 5 um, equals mc over m sun to the power of 3.5. Now, how do I get rid of a f of an exponent to the power of 3.5? 
don't know if you remember this, like if you had something like x squared, the way you would get rid of that exponent, you take the square root, right? Which would be to take this thing squared and you take it to the power of one over two. You take that power to the one over two. It's always one over whatever the exponent is. So to help us here then, to undo this 3.5 exponent, I have to take this whole, I have to take both sides and raise them to the power of one over 3.5. That's the maybe hard math part. Some people find this hard, some people don't. Either way, this is what you have to be able to do. So I get this. You see that? Because I've undone this, right? Because this to the power of 3.5. Uh, to the power of 1 over 3.5, those undo each other. So you just get this, and you get this. Now I have to actually do this on my calculator, right? So let's take a 1 times 10 to the 5. So I'm doing that on my calculator. Um, What's that? That's uh, 100,000. I take that, I do it to the power of, in brackets, 1 over 3.5, and I get an answer of like 26.83, something like that, equals mc over m sun. So if I want to get mc by itself, do you notice that? And then I would say mc equals, let's see, I would have this, um, let's do it to just two significant figures. So we'll say 27, let's say, and I would put my m sun, I could put it on the left or sorry, on the other side like this. So it would be this, this would be my answer here. It would be that, oops, didn't mean to do that. I meant to do a box around it like this. So that's my answer. My answer is that the mass of this star, Beta Centauri, it has a mass of 27 times the mass of the sun. And if you look at it, hey, it's somewhere between 10 and 30. So that kind of works. So to see how we can actually solve, again, a ratio question by just using this mass-luminosity relation. Not so 